large and large summonses. Um, now, <clears throat> unfortunately, my screen, I'm not able to enlarge it now. Uh, so, uh, since, <clears throat> since these are mainly statements that um, I captured from various sources, you can see they are small, small screenshots. So, um, I am not able to enlarge it so much, but let me try to see if enlarging slightly uh, will help. Now, enlarging there takes it. Let's see if I make it full screen. Is that better? I make it full screen. Now it covers everything else. When I do it that way, is it now? Is it better? Yeah, now, okay. Uh, hmm, I've done the full screen and it seems like uh, it's better. Uh, so let's have it as full screen. What happened? So we are say we are saying that two sets are equal if and only if they have the same members or the same elements. Mm -hmm. So whenever you are proving that two sets, the equality of two sets, you have to show containment in both ways, that A lies in B and B lies in A. So, um, so that now, for equality to be implied, containment must be in both ways. The containment uh, of the two sets, you have one to show that A is a subset of B. And since now, from our definition of set theory, we know that A being a subset of B, it implies that, that for every X, um, uh, or, or, or we can say that A is a subset of B means that X is an element of A implies that X is an element of B. And B being a subset of A implies that X is an element of B, or an ele every element of B is also contained in A. So X is also an element of A. And now when these two conditions are satisfied, then we say that the two sets are equal. So uh, let me uh, pull my, my, sorry, sorry. I want um, I want my whiteboard. Uh, not this. So I hope we can we can see my my shared whiteboard. It's a small whiteboard over there, but we were saying that we were just saying that um, two sets A and B, A is equal to B if and only if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. 
So equality, you have to show both ways. And remember, again, when we talk of the set A being a subset of B, uh, this implies that the element X in A, every element of X in A, let me, A is a subset of B implies that every X in A is also in B, implies that X is also a member of B. And now since uh, if for equality then, you have to show that every element X in A implies that that element X is also in B and that every element X in B implies that X is also in A. So when these two are satisfied, then we say that A is equal to B. We say that the two sets are equal, uh, the two sets are equal if those two conditions are satisfied. That A is a subset of B and B is a subset of, of A. So that's what we mean by claiming that by claiming by claiming that um, I want this by claiming that these two sets are equal, we have to show that the, the this containment in both ways that every element any element in A lies in B and B any element in B lies in A. Then now From the two sets A and B, we can build other sets, uh, we can create some new sets from them by considering the, u the, the, the union. For example, A union B is one set we can create, which is the set X such that X is in A and, sorry, or X is in B. So the union becomes that kind of set. Another set we can create from the two given sets, A and B, is the intersection. A intersect B. The intersection of this, you recall, we defined it as the set X such that X is in A and X is in B. Another set, I'll illustrate this on the whiteboard. Another set we can create is the difference of sets A slash B, or the difference of A and B, which we define as the set X such that X is in A and X is not in B. So all these are new sets we can create. Then we have another set, A, the symmetric difference of A and B. The symmetric difference of A and B, the symmetric difference of A and B, we give it as the set A, the difference of A and B, union the difference of b and a so that gives you the symmetric difference uh, in of sets a and b so from uh, given any two sets a and b we can generate or we can build these other sets uh, in that manner. Let, let me illustrate this on the on the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. So given sets A and B, we can build 
new sets as follows. One set we can build from uh, any given two sets is the union A union B, which if you recall from uh, our set theory, this is the set X such that X is in A or X is a member of B. So that union would be a, um, a new set that contains all elements in A and B. Another set we can build is the intersection. If we take A intersect B, again, we recall from set theory that the intersection of two sets is the set X such that X is a member of A and X is a member of B. So this one we found, we, we say that the intersection of A and B, this is the set A, this is the set B, is this one. The region which is common to both A and B, that is the intersection. So you find that this is, the intersection is a smaller set compared to the union. The union becomes bigger because if we take two sets A and B, the union of B of A and B uh, is um, all members or all elements that are found in A and those that are found in B or even in the intersection. So this the shaded part there represents the union. The shaded part here represents the intersection of A and B. So you can see this is a bigger set, but the intersection is a smaller set. Then, the third set we can create from a given two sets is uh, what we call the difference, the set difference. So we can say the difference of A and B, written as A slash B, which is defined as, if you recall from our set theory, it is the set X such that X is an element of A and X is not contained in B, and X is not an element of B. So we have that kind of um, a, a, a set. So that if, for example, we have two sets, let me illustrate this A, and we have another set here, B. A, the difference of A and B will be the set X such that X is in A and X is not in B. So A, slash B, I want to share the, 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 the region that contains this set will be this, uh, this part, whereby X now will be found anywhere in the shaded part, that X is in A and X is not in B, so it will not be in the, in the intersection. Likewise, if we have two sets, again, A and B, I have set A there and set B, the set difference of B and A, so B, the difference of, the set difference of B and A will be that set where the set X such that X is in B and X is not in A. So if you were to shade this, uh, the region where my X will be in B and it is not in A will be this one. It is in B 
and not in A. So the, the, the intersection is not included in our set difference here. And now there is what we call the symmetric difference. Again, you can see this is a new set. This is the, the, the this, these two are new sets. We have what we call the symmetric difference of sets. And by symmetric difference here, we, we denote it as of A and B. We take A and that notation, that's the notation we use for a symmetric difference of A and B, which is defined as the set X such that, or rather we can say, let's, let's use the, the notation, the, the, the unions here. It is the union of the set difference of A and B union the set difference of B and A. So when we have such sets, I want you to compare this uh, definition in number four, the new sets in number four to number three. In number three, we have defined the set difference of A and B and the set difference of B and A. So symmetric difference is um, the union of these two, the union of this, let me use a different color, the union of this and this. Meaning that this, this first one excludes the intersection of A and B. It gives us A minus the intersection. This second one is B minus the intersection of B and A. So you can see where the members will be derived from. So uh, you will have this set as, you can see, it, it will comprise of elements X such that X belongs to the, dif the set difference of A and B, or X belongs to the set difference of B and A. That is what union here means. So you can see from a given set A and two sets A and B, we can create or we can build these other sets, of course, going by the definition of going by the properties the 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 obey. Uh, next, uh, we we go back to the page. So we sorry, just a moment. It's loading. Uh, that's the page you are sharing. So we have this this terminology, the set difference, we have the union, we have the intersection, we have the difference of sets, and we have the symmetric difference of sets. So from our set theory, um, uh, that uh, we should just recall that. So next, Uh, on the next screen. Now, when we have, uh, since we are not covering set, set theory in details, now once we have the concept of a set clear, now let's look at functions, the concept of functions. Remember again, these are terms, terminology we defined in discrete mathematics. 
So what we mean, what do we mean by a function? Remember a function, we said maps from uh, one set to another set. So a function f from set A to B is informally well, like a black box whereby we take it an, an, a member of A or an element of A, feed it into this machine, and the output is an element which is in B. So we can define, and we can, that's an, an analogy you can read for yourself. So more formally, we can define a function as a set of ordered pairs, a set of ordered pairs such that for any element A in A, there is a unique element B in the set B such that AB belongs to that ordered pair F. And we write, um, we write um, F as uh, we write F as an ordered pair. When we write A, B, where A comes from the set A and B comes from the set B, then one is the image of the other and uh, the, 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 the element B is equal to F of A or rather it is the image of A. So that when we take the, our element A from the set A and feed it into our function machine or function, which now gives, which is a rule. A function now here is a rule that assigns each element of the set A to a unique element in the set B, which is F of A. So we would say that uh, in that case, uh, we have a function. The function f is mapping from the set A to the set B. Now, some terminology. Uh, we can say that um, a map, a, a function. Let me let me put it in uh, in other words. Uh, we can define. I go to the whiteboard. Um, I want to clear this. So we can say that a function, we can, uh, let's define a function there. Um, let uh, say x and y, let x and y be any sets. And f be a rule. which assigns the a role which assigns to each element of x a unique element of y. Then the rule, then the rule is called a function. That rule is called a function or a mapping, let me continue it up here, 
or a mapping a function or a mapping from x to y denoted by we denote such a function denoted by um let me clear the next line i'm hoping you are writing this it's an important definition for us to have denoted by f full colon x then an arrow y so we, when we take elements of x and map them to y by a certain rule that rule is the one we are calling f the function f also we can say that if we take an element of x and subject it to the rule f it gives it gives us an a result so eg if x is a member of x then the map f will assign this map f will assign an element of y to x that is f of x will be found in the set y so we have an element x from x but now the new in the after it, it, this function or the, the the rule acts on that x the outcome f of x is a member of y so we can say that the element f of x sorry the element f of x is called is called the image of x the image sorry it's small x the image of x under f under the mapping f so we have the function f which is acting on every element in the set x and maps it to an, an element in the set y and f f of x will be equal to the image points in the set y so for every x in x f of x is in y also we can say that we can collect now uh, we can look at the, the 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 set x this one from where f is map f is mapping so this set x is called the domain the set x this one is is called the domain and this set y is called the range so we can define that terminology as well uh, let me clear this um screen now i hope i hope you are together just in case uh, you are not seeing 
let me know. But uh, I am using the small, I'm sharing the small whiteboard. So in case you are not seeing it, um, then uh, you can let me know. But I, I, I'm writing, since I'm writing, uh, the, the, the writings are big enough. So then we, I want us to define now the, the concept of the, the range, the domain, and the range of a function. So we shall clear this. Um, the set X, capital X, is called the domain. Is called the domain of F. And the set of all images which we called f of x is called the range. So that is uh, simply how we can define a function. But still, we can also define a function now in terms of re uh, relations. Remember here, since we are dealing with sets and we are dealing with algebraic structures, we may have um, a function represented in form of a relation. So uh, I would like us to define a function as well also in terms of a relation. So we can say that in terms of, of relation, a function say f is defined, I hope you are writing, as follows. Is defined as follows. Um, let me clear this part. So we want to define a, um, a function now using the, the terminology of relations. Uh, we can define a map from X To y is a relation is a relation f satisfying so that now when we go back to the 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 pdfs i was sharing it becomes clear so a map from x to y is a relation f satisfying the following conditions uh, I can clear this lower part. One, that the domain of F is equal to that set X. And two, that for every element say x in the set x there exists a unique 
element y in the set y such that such that the ordered pair the x y is in f the ordered pair x y is in f so when we have these uh, when these two conditions are satisfied then we say that f is a function or, or f is a relation i would like uh, um, I would like us to look at uh, the notes I was sharing, a screen that I was sharing. Now that with this a definition of a, um, a relation or a mapping in terms of a relation is concerned, then let's look at this. Well, we have said that um, a function is a set of ordered pairs that is a subset of the Cartesian product A cross B such that for any A in the set A, there is a unique B in the set B such that the pair AB is in F and we write b is equal to f of a instead of by uh, now that pair a b being in f now i, I, I will want you to now the uh, this thing looking at, at our two definitions of the function then this should make sense when we talk of a function as a an ordered pair and uh, as a, uh, as an ordered pair of elements a and b such that A is in the set A and B is in the set B, then now uh, these, uh, those two definitions are actually correct, only that one defines um, the function as a relation, the other one defines the function as, um, a, a, as a rule, as a rule that assigns elements from one set to another. Now, this format of uh, ordered pairs is very common in the Cartesian plane. When we read points of uh, uh, coordinates of points that obey a, a, a given equation, we read them in pairs, two, three, where it is understood that two is a member of the set X or comes from the set X, three comes from the set Y. So, Oh, that is the, 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 the concept and the, how the two elements in the pair are related obeys the definition of the rule that assigns each one to the other. So uh, that's the clarification I wanted to make that when a function is defined as a relation and a function is defined as a, as a, a rule, uh, we are talking about one and the same, and they converge in meaning to some point. Now, let's look at, um, next we look at equality. Uh, I'll share the next screen. Uh, I want to say something about um, equality of mappings. Remember we said sets are equal if they are elements are identical. So let's say something concerning the equality of mappings.
equality of markings. Now, say we have two functions or two markings, F and G. Um, two mappings, F and G, are equal if the following if the following three conditions are satisfied if the following three conditions are satisfied Condition number one is that F and G have the same domain. They share a domain. So both of them are same mapping from the same set X. Two, they have the same range, they are mapping to the same range. So F and G have the same range. So we have defined this terminology. And then the third condition is that for every element say x for every x belonging to the domain belonging to the domain f of x uh, let me write it up here for every x belonging to the domain, we can continue up there. f of x will be equal to g of x. So when these three conditions are satisfied, that one, both of them have the same domain, both of them have the same range, and for every x in the domain, f of x is equal to g of x, then those two mappings are said to be equal. The two mappings are said to be equal when that happens. I would like us to make a remark concerning now the definition of mappings. Uh, so we can make a remark. Note that the definition the definition of a mapping the definition of a mapping does not does not require does not require that distinct you no know, there are those uh, there are those statements that um are, are not said but the definition of a mapping does not require that distinct elements distinct elements say x1 and x2 of the domain have different have different images 
So we have not required this in our definition of a, of a mapping of different images in the range. But it only requires It only requires that each element that each element of X has a unique or each element of the domain that is X is the domain each element of the of x that is the, the domain has a unique it has a unique image in the range has a unique image in the range. So this remark is important because in the next uh, in the next section when we try now to classify various mappings, then this will come in uh, as a difference between the various types of uh, mappings or the various types of functions. So uh, what we are saying is that our basic definition of a mapping or a function just requires that each element in the domain has a unique image in the range. But we can have a situation where uh, more than one element in the domain are mapped to the same element in the range. So that will, uh, we shall see that. So the next Section is now, I would like us to um, try to classify the various types of mappings. So let's look at types of mappings. Types of mappings. The first one is what we call the one to one or in other words, some other writers will call it the injective from injection, the injective mapping. Injective mapping. For this one, um, we can define it as follows, that f from some set x to the set y is not the, the first type of mapping. F, f from x to y is said to be to be injective. or one-to-one -one if whenever if whenever the x1 and x2 are distinct elements of x then there are images that is f of x1 
and f of x2 are distinct elements let me continue up there they are distinct elements are distinct elements of y that is f is one to one normally in short we write one to one like that f is one to one if f of x1 is equal to f of x2 implies that x1 is equal to x2 for every x1 and x2 in the set x so for every x1 and x2 in this sorry for every x1 and x2 in the set x f of x1 will be equal to f of x2 only if x1 is equal to x2 otherwise distinct elements will have this distinct images so that is uh, that is what we, we mean by a one to one this functions or rather the images will only be equal if the objects are equal otherwise they are not supposed to be equal if they are not equal then their corresponding objects are not equal eg we can represent this in form of a diagram as follows Sorry. eg uh, we can have a, a map like this where we have a set x and we have another map here another set y and now the set x has elements say 0 1 and 2 the set y has elements 0 1 2 3 4 and our function f is defined as x is equal or x it maps x to x squared let me have it this way f is mapping x to x squared so when x is zero it will map zero to zero when x is one it will map one to one this is one when x is two it maps it to four so we find that for any two images to be equal then they must the, the their objects must be equal so if f of 2 is equal to f if f of say 1 is equal to f of 2 f of 1 is equal to f of 2 then it means that 1 and 2 are equal otherwise they should map to distinct images so for x for one and two which are not equal in the in the domain their correct images should also not be equal that is what a one to one mapping implies the second type of mapping that we can mention is what we call 
and onto mapping. You see in this illustration, on the set Y, we have some elements in Y which have no pre-image, which do not have, which are not uh, mapped to by any member of X. There's no member of X in our case that is mapping to two or that is mapping to three. So uh, in this case, then we find that not every element in this set Y has an a, a, a pre-image in the set X. So there are some members there which are not matched to a corresponding member in the set X. Now let's look at the second type of um, mappings. The second type now does not allow what is happening here where some members of Y are left and matched with corresponding members of X. So let's say something about the second category or the second type of mappings. Number two, we have what we call the onto. Or some other writers will call it suggest, subjective. Subjective mapping. It's an onto mapping or a subjective mapping. Mm -hmm. And uh, we describe or we define an onto mapping as follows. The map F from X to Y is said to be onto or to be subjective if the range of x is equal to the range of y that is for every element y in y there exist x in x such that such that y is equal to f of x such that y is equal to f of x so every element in this in the in the in the range has a corresponding element in the object or in the domain where it is mapped from so we will not have a situation of some elements in the set y which are not mapped you know, the, which do not have a pre-image where they have come from. So if we were to represent this type of uh, mapping in form of a diagram, then we can have it like this, which now does not allow some members of the, the range to be left unmatched. So in G, if we have two sets, we have the set X, and we have the set y and the set x has some elements say one two three four set y has some other elements say um five six uh okay five seven Five, seven, nine, eleven. So we have those two sets. This is Y. Sorry. This is the set Y. 
and this the mapping here we can put it on the side there f, f maps x to 2x plus 3 it maps x to 2x plus 3 so that 1 is mapped to 5 2 um, is mapped to 7 3 uh, is mapped to 9 4 is mapped to 11 So we find that our domain, our range, sorry, our range has these elements, one, two, three, four. And our domain also has four elements. So we find that if we were to map backwards from y to x, then the range of y is equal to that of x. So when that happens, when that happens, then we say that this is an onto mapping. So clearly you can see here there's no there's no element in Y which is not matched to some element in X by F. So when F is doing such, it is said to be an onto mapping or a subjective map. The that type of uh, Mapping that I would like us to mention is, uh, okay, can have it down here, number three, is what we call um, uh, the, uh, a bijective map, a map which is both one-to-one -one and onto, and it is called a one-to-one -one correspondence. One-to-one correspondence correspondence or some other writers call it the bijective bijective mapping a one to one correspondence or a bijective mapping now this is now a hybrid of the two. It's a mapping which is both one to one and onto. One to one in the sense that uh, distinct elements in X have distinct images in Y. And it is onto in the sense that every object in, the, in Y must have a pre-image in X. So it should satisfy those two conditions. And then that way, that is when we say that those, that mapping is a bijective or a one-to-one -one correspondence. So we can, let's write that. Uh, I'll put it up there. Um, let me just clear all and say, Number three, we have the one to one correspondence. Or the bijective marking. So for this, we can say that uh, the map, sorry, F from X to Y is bijective. That map is bijective if it is both, you can say it is both one to one 
and on to. It is a one to one map and it is an on to map. And when this now F happens to be this kind of a mapping, which is both one to one and on to, these two sets, the sets X and Y, because F is mapping from X to Y, these two sets are said to be in a one to one correspondence. So the sets X and Y. are said to be in a one to one correspondence. They are said to be in a one to one correspondence. This is because the element the number of elements in the set X is equal to the number of elements in the set Y, and each element is matched to a, a corresponding element in the other set. Even if you look at, even if you look at it from both, in both directions. So if we have A, B, C, maybe D, E, F, then we find that uh, in a one-to-one -one correspondence, we find that uh, this happens. Every element in E is mapped to, in one, in the set X is mapped to an, an element in the set Y. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the members of the two sets. That's what we mean when we have, um, when we have a one-to-one -one or a bijective map, which is both one-to-one -one and on-to. Um, also, we can say something about the inverse map. Note that now that uh, each element for a bijective map since each element is mapped to a corresponding image, and the same can be each element in Y has an, a pre-image in X, then we can define the inverse map. So these are the three main types. These are the three main types of, um, of mappings. The rest are just uh, uh, other aspects of, this, of, of mappings. So let's say something about the, the inverse. Because now if I know the image, I can use the inverse of a, give of, um, a map to obtain the corresponding pre-image. So uh, let's say something about inverse mappings. Um, now, if we have this, if F, which maps from X to Y, so it's mapping from X to Y, is one to one and on to. then it's inverse it's inverse now denoted by this one f superscript one is the map This one, F inverse 
is mapping from y back to x. So it is the, the map f inverse from y to x at that. Such that. Uh, let me continue up there. Such that. Assert F inverse of Y is equal to X. Implies that Y is equal to F of X. So when this happens such that this when that happens, then we say that we have an inverse map. And this, we, uh, we, we all, we need to talk about inverse mappings. We talk about inverse, ma inverse mappings. Uh, when you are working now, the reverse, the opposite of a given function, the reverse, when you are working from the image back to the object, then we say that you are, uh, obtaining the inverse of the image. Also, we can say that it can easily be shown, let, let me continue this statement down here. It can easily be shown that can easily be shown that the map F inverse is also one to one and on to. And hence, its inverse, hence, its inverse can be defined its inverse can be defined which is F itself. So the inverse of F inverse is F, which is F itself. So basically that's what we can say. Uh, since F is mapping from X to Y, and F inverse is now the reverse of this. F inverse is mapping from Y to X. Then we can say that the inverse of F inverse is F. So it can be, you can argue out that way and show that the inverse of F inverse is the function F itself. So that was th that's on mappings. Again, we, we have what we call the direct and inverse images. Let's say something about direct and inverse images of a given map. direct and inverse
images. Now, if we have a situation like this, where f, which maps from x to y, f is mapping from x to y, and we have subsets, we have a subset of x and we have a subset of, of y, then we can have the following. So if f from x to y, is a map and then we have the set A, A and B are subsets of X and y respectively then f of a is called the direct image of A under F. Given by F of the subset A is equal to the set y in the set y such that there exists x in a such that y is equal to f of x so that is the set our f of the subset a so f of a is the set y in y such that there exists an element a sorry an element x in a so that y is equal to f of that x so this defines a direct image it defines a direct image of a under the function f or under the mapping f and hence we can say, let me continue up here. Hence, and hence, F of A is the set of all images it is the set of all image the images of the elements of a in x which is a subset of x So that is what we have. If you were to put this in form of a diagram, then this is what we would have. That say we have a set A, a set X, sorry, and in this we have a subset A. And then we have this set Y. And now under F, f maps a to f of a so this f of a is contained in y so under f we have f of a and f of a is found in y so this is an example of a direct image direct image 
of A under the mapping F. So we would call this representation as the representation of a direct image. Then uh, we have what we call the inverse image. So in a similar way, we can define the inverse image. If uh, we have a subset B in Y, so let me first describe the inverse image and then we can put it in form of a diagram. So I hope you have drawn this representation of a direct image. So we are recording that class. So um, we can now look at the, a similar description of now the inverse image. Let's clear this. Similarly, similarly, the set F inverse of B is called the inverse um, image of B, where B is a subset of Y under F and is given by um, F inverse of B is equal to the set x in x such that f of x is contained in b. f of x is contained in b. So f inverse of b is equal to the set x in x such that f of x is contained in b. So that represents an inverse image. This is because now the, our set b is in y. And remember our map was from, our map x was from, f was from x to y. So when we have a subset in y here, then what would map it to X is an inverse. So this is the inverse map we are talking about. If you would represent this in form of a, di a diagram, then we shall have it this way. Let me clear this. Then we can say that if we represent it now in form of a diagram, we have two sets. Say I have the set X there, I have the set Y, then I have a subset of Y, which we have called B. And now since uh, my function F is defined from X to Y, then what I will have, if B is a subset of Y, then in the subset of X, I will have F inverse of B. Meaning that my subset of, my subset B of Y is mapped by its inverse, the inverse of F to the set X. 
So this is a, a diagrammatic representation of the inverse image. Inverse image. Then another mapping we shall find what mentioning in uh, algebraic structures as we get along is what we call the identity mapping. Identity mappings are those mappings that leave the object and the image unchanged. So uh, we can say something about the identity. mapping identity mappings let x be a set and i be a map from x the same set x i from x to x be a map from x to x then this i is said to be to be the identity mapping if let me be let me continue up there they said to be an identity mapping on x If for every element, say x in x, i of x is equal to x. So it leaves each element of x unchanged. So it maps each element to itself, each element to itself. So in that case, we say that the, ident the mapping we have there is an identity mapping. It maps each element to, of the set to the same element. Now, having talked or having defined mappings or functions, various types of functions, then we have situations where uh, we can have a composition of more than one mapping so that um, we can have one map acting on a set and then now another one acting on the image to give us to map it to another set so let's say something about the composite or the composition of mappings or the composite mapping So composite mappings, uh, we, we can let, let's have two mappings, maybe F and G. F mapping from a set X to Y, and then G mapping from a set Y to maybe another set Z. So let F, which maps from X to Y and G, be another map which maps from say y to z that is to be mappings
then the mapping f g uh, sorry let me do it the other in the reverse way the mapping um g f composite f maps from x to z normally we perform a composite maps from right to left we can we, we perform them in that order so we will have f mapping x to y then g takes over and maps y to z so that compo the, the composite map there maps x straight to z so the composite f g f which maps x to z defined by defined by g composite f of x is equal to g of f of x for every x in x for every x in x is called a composition of maps or the product some other writers will call it the product map or The product of two mappings. Product of two mappings F and G. That is um, G composite F of X is equal to G of F of X where X is in X um, let me continue down here f is in x is in x uh, f of x is in y and g of f of x is in z so we have that containment so when we when that happens then we say that we have a composite map gf which maps from x through y to z maps from x all the way to z and then now remember when we looked at the binary operations of uh, systems we talked of the associative property and we also talked of the commutative property so this composition of mappings here also um, can be described in terms of being able to obey or not be able to obey the associative or the the commutative property so let's mention that property in regard to the composite map 
because sometimes when you are referring to an algebraic system, the binary operation involved could be a composite map. And you may be required to check or to find out whether a given set and a, a composite map satisfies some of the algebraic systems uh, axioms or properties. So I would like to mention something concerning the associativity and commutativity of product mappings or composite mappings. So I'll clear this. So associativity. and commutativity. of composite mappings. Now let's say we have three, we have three mappings. So let F map from X to Y, G be a mapping from Y to Z, and say H be another map from Uh, H be a map from Z to another set CW. Let those three be mappings. Then um, we shall define them as uh, the composite map h g f maps from x all the way to w this is by, by definition of our composite map f maps from x to y g will now map from y to z and h will map from z to w so that their composition will map from x all the way to W. Then we can say by the associative law, the, the, the composite mappings, uh, let me illustrate this situation. Let's say we have the three of them. We have the set, uh, before I leave this page, we have the set X, then F maps from X to Y, we have the set Y, this is F. Then G maps from uh, Y to Z, this is G, and uh, this is the set Z. And now we have another one, let me squeeze it down there. We have W, whereby uh, H is mapping from Z to W. So we have those three following like that. So what we mean is that the composition of the three will map from X to W. Now, we'd like to find out uh, whether uh, as the associative property is obeyed by this composition of maps. We'd like to check whether the associative property is obeyed. So, with this, bearing that uh, sequence of uh, mappings in mind, 
I want to clear that page. Uh, let me put it here just for illustration. We have the set X. Under F, it is mapped to Y. Then under G, it is mapped to Z. And under H, it is mapped to W. So that the composition of the three maps X to W, direct to W. Now, by associativity, we can say that by the associativity law of composite mappings, Um, we can say this, um, H, G, F, uh, if, if I take now this last two, if I, I take these two first, this will be equal to H, G, F. Let's see what is happening here. Remember brackets introduce a preference. Brackets will introduce some preference. So when I put brackets here, blocking the first two, this last two, uh, it means that I have to perform G composite F first. And G composite F, G composite F, will map x g composite f meaning that i perform f then followed by g i perform f we are performing in this reverse order we perform f then followed by g so g composite f will map x to z and now H, uh, when we perform H on this result of G composite F, this one maps Z to W. Meaning that now the, the, the mapping, what has, what has happened here is, let me pick a different color. F has mapped from X to Y, G has mapped, because of the composition there, G has mapped from Y to Z. So this is our, uh, our G, F. G, F has therefore mapped from X to Z. And now H takes the, the result here and maps it to Z. So now H now acts on gf and maps it to z so you can see in essence we have mapped from that composite map as mapped from x all the way to z what happens when we reverse when we change the order in which i i, I we, we carry out this hg the brackets here now mean we, we perform HG first. Where HG means we perform G. G maps, let me pick a different color for this one. Now, G is mapping Y to Z. And H is mapping H is mapping um, Z to W. So we have G and we have H. And now we have F.
f remember now here f uh, sorry it, it, we, we normally carry out this um, composition left to right so f is mapping the uh, f is mapping the, the 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 image we have f here now which take which takes the image of g to from y to z, uh, f ma maps you see for for g to act on y f has already mapped there and now g maps y to z and z or h maps z to w so we find that the essence of these mappings with f they are followed by you see now we have we start with f followed by the composite of these two meaning that it is still mapping all the way from x from x to the final set w so these two are equal because they both map from x all the way to w and because this is happening or this is possible then we can say that the composition of mappings in this case is obeying the co the, the the associative property is obeying the associative property but now let's look at the commutativity commutativity now becomes a problem commutativity here since um you see f here when f acts on x to map it to y and then now g composite h h composite g takes up the value from y and maps it directly to to z then we have that the same mapping taking place from x all the way to w so associative property there is obeyed so we can conclude and say um, the composite map obeys associative property so i can clear this and say that therefore the composite map is associative The composite map is associative. Now, what happens to now a situation of um, a situation of uh, commutativity? So, when we take G composite F, G composite F will map X to Z. But what happens to F? composite g meaning that we perform g followed by f g followed by f means that we have y g maps y to z and f is supposed to map x to y so it you see here now g composite f is f of g of uh, y remember g of y is in z this set these elements are in z and x on uh, sorry f acts on elements of the set x so this is not this a problem here because the f is not able to act on members of z f is only able to act on elements of x therefore this one is not possible so this one 
is uh, there's some ambiguity there. There's some ambiguity there because now f since g of y is in the set z then x f is supposed to act on that member th th that set z and yet f has no mandate in z it only acts in x therefore there's a problem there and we can say that therefore g composite f is not equal to f composite g so uh commutative the commutative property here does not apply in composite mappings the commutative property fails to to apply in in um, a composite map so we can conclude and say that let me write the conclusion up here and say um the composite mappings the composite mapping in general does not obey does not obey the commutative property or the commutative law that is in general we can say that uh, that is g composite f is not equal to f composite g in general So I'd like to give an, to, uh, an illustration, uh, an example that I would like you to work on to illustrate that uh, what we are saying here about the, um, the commutative aspect of the composite map does not apply. So let's have an example. Uh, for example, uh, let X be the set A, B, C, D. And F1 and f2 are one to one on both from x to x itself defined by or defined as follows
that F1 of A is equal to B, F1 of B is equal to C, F1 of C is equal to A, and F1 of D is equal to D. So that is F1 is defined like that. And F2 of A, F2 of A is equal to A. F2 of B is equal to C. F2 of C is equal to B and F2 of D is equal to D. So we have the two mappings F1 and F2 defined on the set X like that. So I'd like you to write that, the two mappings, and then we want to test for, uh, for composition and, and illustrate that these composite mappings are not uh, commutative. So I can continue it on the upper lines. I'm sure you have written that. So sorry. Then by definition, of the composite map, F1, sorry, let, let me have it, uh, let's use the convention we normally use. So F2, composite F1 of A is equal to, we are, um, the composite map there is defined as F1, F2, F1 of A, so we have F2, into F1 of A. So F1 of A from our definition is B. So this becomes F2 of B and F2 of B, F2 of B is equal to C. Now we can reverse the order. We are trying to see if these composite maps are commutative. So we can now take the composition of F1 composite F2 of an element CA. By definition of the composite map, we have F1 into F2 of A. And F2 of A is defined here as A. So this is the same as having F1 of A. <coughs> and F1 of A is equal to B from our definition. F1 of A is equal to B. So you find that this statement, these two results are not equal. F2 composite F1 is C. F1 composite F2 of A is B. So we can therefore say that that shows that um, therefore, oh sorry, therefore F2 composite F1 is not equal to F1 composite F2. And hence, the composition, the composite map is not commutative. So we can conclude here and say hence, 
composite map. is not commutative. The composite map is not commutative. And that's what we have uh, uh, found in our discussion. So that's now so much on um, on, on, on um, maps and functions so that uh, we shall stop there and the next class we shall try to look at um, relations involving sets uh, we shall look at uh, the binary binary relations because uh, that also can be used as a relation can be used as a um, as a binary operation on a, on a set so that uh, when you are given um, an algebraic system, it is accompanied by a binary operation, which is a, now a binary relation. So we shall also look at the aspects of that next week and uh, uh, be able to define the operations of or how to uh, how to view a relation as an operation and how it can be used in algebraic systems. So we shall stop there. Um, probably continue next week. Now, uh, it's good that um, the BSC, the BSS people uh, hope